so welcome to the second video of MATLAB tutorial in the previous video we mostly use MATLAB inter interactively and generally used it as a calculator so basically we just put some uh, input numbers or expression and then by pressing enter we just saw the result instantly so in general purpose application this is not usually very efficient because it's not like all the expressions or a statement that we want to do need to produce immediate results so there are some procedures that involve several steps to be completed so today I want to talk about how we can discuss such cases before I begin one thing that I forgot to mention uh, last time was that you can change the layout of the uh, MATLAB window that you see and one of the panels that is usually very useful is the command history so you can activate it by going to layout and then command history and then you can select doc that makes it uh, available underneath the workspace so as you can see here I have record of all the uh, lines of code that I wrote in the previous lecture here so just by clicking any one of these you can uh, execute them uh, without the need to type them again so let's just begin talking about how we can write scripts functions and so on and so forth so uh, scripts are the simplest types of MATLAB program that you can use to kind of streamline the procedures that you want to apply to a data so one thing that you should know before writing any computer program in general is that you have to be able to divide the steps that involve in that program so for example you need to know what are the inputs to the algorithm or the program and how you want to acquire those inputs either by prompting the user to put some input numbers or by reading some files from the hard drive then you need to know what is the procedures that you want to apply to those data so for that it's usually common uh, recommended to go for a, a modular programming approach basically breaking down the whole problem into individual and smaller steps uh, going in a top-down design and then try to implement each one of them each one of the sections individually and then improve upon them until you get to the final algorithm that you want and the final step usually involves on how to display or output the result that you want to have for example if it's a simple script how you want to show the results or if it's a more advanced one whether you're working with uh, an image or a large data set how you want to uh, store the result the result for subsequent uses so creating a script in MATLAB is very simple and straightforward what you need to do is that you go to new and then select uh, script and this opens this additional panel in MATLAB that is basically a text editor that you can use as you can see here it gave it a, an initial uh, name so for example here the name is untitled 2 so let's just uh, try to write a program our first script uh, to compute the area of a circle so since we want to compute the area of a circle one thing that we have to have is a variable that represents the radius of the circle and then since this uh, script is going to be very simple we only have one other line of code that basically uh, computes the area of the circle using the the radius that is provided so 
radius to the power of 2. So to be able to run this script, we need to save it. So just by clicking save, we can give it a name. So let's just give it a simple name, script1, and then save it. If you look closely in the list of the files in the correct uh, current folder, you see that now we have a script1.m, which is the usual extension for uh, MATLAB programs, appears in the MATLAB course folder that uh, I created. So to run this script, we can go to the command window and simply just type the name of the script without the extension. So if I press that, you see that uh, I have radius, which is defined to be 4, and I have area to be 50.2655. These two variables are created within the script, and as you can see, they appear in the workspace as well. One of the good habits in the programming is to be able to document the script and, and files that you write and to do that you can add additional comments to your script and function without them being interfering with the actual uh, statement that happened inside the script so to do that in MATLAB you can use the percent sign and whatever you write after the percent sign in that line will be considered to be a comment so for example I can just write this script is for computing the area of a circle so if I save this and I rerun the previous line of code again you see that the result has not changed but one good thing about this is that if I try to get help about this script if I type help and then the name of the script uh, what happens is that the first line of comment that we just put on top will appear in the command window so I highly recommend you to get to the habit of commenting and documenting your script because uh, this is going to be something that uh, very that is going to be very time saving in the future especially when you're writing more and more complex code or if you want to share your code with other people if it's well commented that means that they can progress much more faster in this simple script as you can see I have put the uh, the radius as a number at the beginning of this script but what if you want the user to provide uh, the input instead of the input being hard-coded inside the script so there is an easy answer to that too so you can use the input function one of the internal functions in MATLAB to do that so let's just uh, do a simple example let's just say we will have R to be input. So the first argument in the input function is basically the prompt that will be shown to ask for the user input. So I can just say enter a number and then end the single quote and then I can press enter when I do that you see that here it says enter a number basically the same uh, sentence that we just put and if you look here is that the MATLAB is waiting for the input so if I for example put 56 and then press enter it shows the value of R to be 56 so let's just do the same thing for our script and try to ask the user to input any value for the radius that they want. 
So I have added this line of code instead of the previous line to our script and I saved the script. So now every time that I write the, uh, run the script, it asks the user to put uh, a radius as the input. So let's just run script one. It adds the user for the radius. So let's just put a large number 854 for example. And as you can see, the area is computed and put into a scientific format as shown as the result. I can uh, rerun the script one more time and let's just this time put 4 as before. And again, it computes the uh, area of the circle and provides the output as the result. But what happens if instead of a number we just put a character for example. So let's see what we have here. So instead of a number for radius let's just put A and see what we get at the output. As you can see the default uh, expectation for the input function is to get a number. So if we put a string it, sh it shows us an error and then prompts the user again to put the correct value. So, so what should we do if we want to have a script that accepts a string or characters instead of the numbers? So let's just create another script. So this is another way of creating a script by pressing this uh, plus sign. So let's just put some comment. This script is for working with string. So let's just have a name for the variable as my str. And let's just have as the input function enter a string. So, so far <coughs> it's basically the same as before, but since we want to specify the input to be a string, we just put uh, S in single quotes and then we close our string. So to see um, uh, parameters related to the string, let's just go with showing the size of the string. You will see in a minute how this is going to be useful. So let me just save it as script2 and let's just run the script. So it asks for a string. So let me just put a string of numbers and letters to see what happens. So as you can see now it can accept both numbers and uh, letters and store that in the mystr variable and you can see that the value for the length of this uh, string is 7 because I put as input 7 characters. So what happens if we have spaces in between the characters? So let's just run this one more time. Let's add some extra spaces and then press enter. You see in the string that accepted that the input the uh, spaces between characters are also uh, considered and now the length of the string is 12. What if we have uh, spaces before the beginning of a set of a string? What would that do? So let's just add three spaces here and put eight characters at the end. So as you can see, the spaces before the string are also considered as part of the input string. What if we only put spaces? What do you think that ha happens? I put two spaces and then when I press enter, you see that my string is a zero by zero or empty character array and the length of the 
uh, array E0. So if you're only putting spaces, that means that it doesn't accept it or it doesn't get all only spaces as the input. But if you have spaces between or before or after characters, it accepts that as valid input. Output uh, functions in MATLAB give us the capability to uh, output the string or the numbers or in general the result of all our calculations in the uh, command window. Uh, so there are some ways to use these output uh, functions. So two main ones are disp and fprintf functions. So disp function is used when you want to show the result of a expression or a statement without any initialization of the different parameters uh, that are uh, in the output. Uh, so this this function does not give us the capability to format the output. So let's just see some examples here. So if I just type this hello and press enter you just see that it showed hello I can do this the same for numbers too if I for example say 2 plus 4 multiplied by multiplied by 8 and press enter it shows the value to be 34 but on the other hand if printf give us the capability to format the output the way that we want. So let's just go for example uh, f printf we have the value is percent d and then we close the single quote and after the comma we just put a number let's see what happens if i press enter here so as you can see here it says the value is 345 and then the excla exclamation sign so one thing that you notice is that in the message that we showed here we put percent d so what does it mean percent d so this is actually a placeholder that uh, that tells the function f printf that you have to look for uh, an additional uh, variable or number in the rest of the function so let's just see what happens if i run this without any uh, extra variables so as you can see it just shows the value is and then blank so basically if i don't specify that value it doesn't have any value to put instead of the percent %d. So percent %d is a placeholder for integers. There are other placeholders that you can use. It's one of them is percent %f which is used for floating point number, percent %c which is used for showing characters and percent %s which is used for showing strings. One other thing that you might notice is that after executing this uh, line of code and pressing enter the uh, the prompt that shows uh, after finishing up with pr uh, printing this statement comes in exactly in the same line as the previous output to avoid that you can use the new line command which is backslash n and when we do that now the the message is you know in its own line and then the prompt comes uh, in the line after that so let's just see how we can combine uh, several of these uh, in an example so let me just write f print f 
the value is percent %d and the string is percent %s and then I just put the new line command and you can see here we have two placeholders here so the first one is percent %d which is used for uh, putting integers and the second one is uh, percent %s which is used for putting strings so now we have to specify uh, a number so let's just put 23 and for the string we put it in single quote let's just put it as string itself so see uh, what happens as you can see here the value is 23 and the string is a string so again these placeholders are used to look for uh, other arguments inside the fprintf function so this can be very useful uh, especially since a lot of the time you need to have placeholders in order to be able to uh, print meaningful data because not all the numbers can be hard coded inside the printf function so what if this is the result of another function so by having placeholders you have the capability to uh, replace these placeholders with the numbers that you want and just by having this line of code uh, you have a more general functionality So let's just see how you can use the fprintf function to show the values of vectors and matrices. So before I do that, I just uh, clear the command window. To do that, I just type clc. And now the command window is cleared. Of course, we still have access to all the previous commands in the command history. So let's just define a vector uh, of 2 to, let's say, seven so if i just press enter you see that the values of this vector are two to seven with increments of one let's see what happens if i consider this as an input to the fprintf function so f printf and i only put the the placeholder d and i add the new line command 2 and I just pass it pass the vector to the fprintf if I press enter you can see that uh, it goes through all the elements of the vector and shows them one by one if I don't put the new line command what do you think would happen does it show it this way or any other way so by pressing enter you see that all the values are printed one after another without any space so if you want to have uh, a space you need to specify it yourself so to do that if I for example put two spaces here and I print enter as you can see now between each number and the next one there are two spaces of course we don't have the new line command and the prompt is showing right after the execution of the fprintf function so let's see what happens if we are dealing with matrices so let me just create <coughs> a matrix of two rows and three columns so if you remember for any row we had to separate them using comma or spaces and to go to the next row we had to use the semicolon so if i press enter this is the matrix that we have two three five four seven five so let's just do the same and see what happens if we pass this to the uh, fprintf function so f printf percent d and then new line and as the argument that 
will be replaced uh, in the placeholder we put the matrix and if I press enter you see that all the elements of this matrix are shown as uh, one by one one thing that you might notice is that it doesn't show them row wise so if it was showing them row wise you should have two first then three then five and then four and then seven and then five but what you see here is that you have two then four then three then seven then five and then five so this is because matlab gives preference to the columns of the matrix first and that's actually what's happening if you want to access uh, matrix ele elements using a linear indexing method so let's see what should we do if we want to show the elements of a matrix basically in the same format that uh, we have uh, as a matrix so as a 2d uh, object rather than only in a single line so to do that we need to specify how many values you we want to show in each row so to do that we have printf again since uh, our matrix is two by three that means that each row should have three numbers so what i do is that i just put percent d space percent d space percent d and then i put uh, the new line command and then pass the matrix as the placeholder so if i press this now you see that the output is uh, in a similar format to the uh, original matrix but again there is something off so as i said the MATLAB gives preference to the columns of a matrix first so what you see here is that even though in each row you have three values similar to the original matrix but what happened was that you have two first and then four second right so to remedy this instead of uh, show passing uh, as the argument the matrix itself we can just uh, pass the transpose of the matrix and see what we have so if we do that you see that now we have two three five four seven five exactly the same as we had in the original matrix that we defined so now let's combine everything that we learned so far and modify the first script that we wrote to be able to handle uh, and format the output correct so i have modified the first script that we wrote to add more uh, comments before the prompt and also to format the output so let's just go over the code real quick at the beginning i put a note to specify that all the units that are shown here are in centimeter then these two lines of code which are practically the same as before we get the input radius from the user and we compute the area one thing that you might notice that has changed is that now in order to suppress the outputs of these two lines so they, it doesn't show the value of radius or the value of area uh, I put semicolon and then I show the uh, radius and the area using these two commands so as you can see here I have used percent %f as the placeholder and one other thing that you notice is that I put a dot 2 which basically tells the fprint that I only want to show the floating point numbers up to two floating uh, values so let's just uh, quickly clear the command window and try to run the script so as you can see first it shows the note and then ask for the radius so I can just put 20 
1.3 and then press enter and as you can see here it says for a circle with a radius of 21.30 centimeter remember we use two floating uh, digits the area is going to be 1425.31 I can change these to higher numbers let's say 5 and then I can do a similar thing for the area as well save it and rerun the script so for example here if I just put a value with five uh, floating digits and I press enter I get this result as you and as you can see now the output has six floating digits so now that you learn how you can work with basic scripts let's just see how we can use basic plotting capabilities on MATLAB so to do that let me just create another script and in this script in this script I want to uh, create a plot of sine and cosine function so like before it's usually recommended to have a line of comments so I can just say this script is used for uh, plotting sine uh, and cosine functions so to make sure that no other figure is open we can put close all which basically closes every other plot that we had it's not necessary that you have that but sometimes when you work with these scripts many many times you see that every time that you run them new figures are created so it's usually a good practice to close them all before you run a new script of course again it's not necessary for you to have that another uh, line of code that is usually helpful is you can use this line to uh, clear the workspace so let's just have that clear all you saw an example of this in the previous lecture too and finally we can uh, clear the command window using the CLC so to be able to uh, plot sine and cosine we need to have two coordinates right one X coordinate and one Y coordinate X coordinate can change linearly so for doing that I use the colon operator to define a set of uh, numbers that change linearly we can use the line space function too but this is usually more straightforward so I just say uh, X start from 0 with the steps of 2 multiplied by pi divided by let's just go with pi divided by um, 20 and then the final value is pi so this starts from 0 ends in pi with the incremental steps of pi over 20 just like you saw in the previous video we can pass this vector uh, to the sine function easily so we can just say y equals sine of x and when this line of code is executed uh, the sine will be computed for all the values of x individually so for now let's only focus on uh, showing the value for the sine function so to do that the simplest way of doing that is to use plot we put the uh, first argument as x and the second one as y and let's just 
save this as simple plot script. So as before, you can just type the name of your script here, or there is another way of doing that too. If the editor is selected, you can just click run, and this basically runs the script. So let's just do that. So when I do that, as you can see here, the value of the sign function is being represented. Let's just change this to 2 pi and rerun it so we have the full uh, sine wave. So what if you want to limit the, the x-axis to only show from 0 to 2 pi? So in order to do that, you can use the axis function. So axis function is basically gives you the capability that to uh, to limit the range of the values that are shown in the x and y direction so we can have axis equals and the input is a vector itself so the first component is the minimum value for the x coordinate uh, the second one is the maximum value for the x coordinate and the third one is the minimum value for the y coordinate and the maximum the fourth value is the uh, maximum value for the y coordinate so this uh, tells us tells the plot function to only plot in this region so if i rerun the function again now you can see that it shows uh, and the sine function from 0 to 2 pi and for the y it's showing it from negative 1 to positive 1 and as you know that is the range of function sine it's between negative 1 and positive 1 so now as you can see the figure that you have is uh, very bland right so what if you want to put some uh, titles for the uh, plot so the way to do it is by using the title function so if I just put title in parentheses and I can put the title of the plot that we have so we can just say this is a plot of the sine function so let's just rerun it and see what changes so after doing that since we put this as uh, the title you see now the sine function appears in the title of the plot what if we also want to uh, label the x coordinate and one y coordinate so to do that for x coordinate we use the x label so let's just put it as capital x and we can do the same for the y axis too so if i run this hmm, sorry i made a mistake it's label and this is for by label it's true it's correct so if i rerun this now you can see we have x here and we have y here so this is one way of doing the plot but as you can see it is very straightforward what if you want to ch change the way that this function is being plotted so what if you want it to be shown as a dashed line or dotted line or with a different color so matlab gives you this capability as well if you go to the help uh, documentation of plot you can see that there are several possibilities that you can use you can use different colors blue cyan uh, green, black, magenta, red, yellow, 
and as for the symbol that you can use for uh, plotting you can use circles you can use diamond you can use plus sign minus sign um, triangles and as for the type of the line that you can have you can use dashed lines dotted lines uh, or dash dash da sorry dot dash lines uh, and so on and so forth so let's see how we can specify that so to do that we need to have one additional argument and inside that we have to specify the type of uh, line or car a symbol that we want to use in this uh, plot so let's just go for showing it in black using uh, diamonds as as symbols so let's just run this as you can see for all the points that are uh, plotted uh, it it uses a diamond to show that point uh, and the color is also is black so one thing that you may notice is that this can be very useful when you have multiple uh, plots in one graph so let's just try to add another plot let's just call this y2 and for this let's just make it as cosine of x so how can we plot both a sine and cosine so the way to do it is by using the function hold on which basically uh, tells MATLAB that you want to preserve the previous plot and you want to add the new plot to that previous plot so now we have x y2 and let's just for this one let's just go with uh, a green uh, dotted line so I'm it's probably a good practice now to change the title too of course it doesn't make that much difference but since now we don't only have the sine function we have the cosine function too let's just make it more general so if I just plot this uh, you can see that now we have both the sine and the cosine function also you see that it shows the values for uh, y2 and the reason for that is that I didn't suppress the output using semicolons so let's just change this to blue and let's just change it to to circles so it's more uh, visible so as you can see uh, it shows uh, both the sine function and the cosine function but you might say okay so now if I have multiple functions how can I distinguish between them if I am only looking at the the graph itself without the knowledge of what's happening inside the program and that's actually very simple you can add a legend to your plot so you can say legend and inside that you basically list all the functions that you have plotted so let's just put sign first because you plotted sine first and then we have the cosine and if I run this one more time you see that now a legend appears in the plot that shows that the black diamonds are the sine function and blue circles are the cosine function of course this is not the only possible plot function that you can have in MATLAB there are other types of uh, plot functions for example ball, uh, bar plots, pie charts, all sort of different things but for now uh, it's a good practice for you to play around with different parameters of the plot function and see how you can create uh, customized plots using any function that you can uh, define so what we saw so far was how we can use a script to basically streamline the setup 
mm, procedure that we want to apply to the data that we have but that's not the only way to do that especially in fact there are cases that using a script are not uh, recommended and one of the reasons for that is that whenever you write a script whatever variable that you use within the script they will all appear in the workspace so in cases that you, your problem is very com complex it's very hard to keep track of all the variable names that you define so I can give you a quick example to see what I mean by that so let's just CLC clear the command window and also clear all the works workspace so let's just run the uh, script that we had before so let's run the script too it asks for a string so let's just give it a string of letters and numbers and as you can see within this script we had this my str which accepted the input string and also we use the function length to get the length of this uh, string so as you can see we have my str variable and <coughs> ans or the default answer uh, variable and both of them appear in the workspace so but on the other hand let me just give you another example so let's just use the sign function and pass the number 10 to it and if I press enter you see that only variable a uh, is present now in the workspace and whatever variable that was defined within the sign function it's not going to be in the workspace so here uh, I want to show you how we can define functions that you can use like you use uh, internal functions of MATLAB so let's create a function that accept one input and provide one output and we want to use this function to calculate the area of a circle so to create a new function we can go to new and then select function and when we do that uh, a template will be open uh, with a, a sample name so here is untitled 10 and as you can see here the file is already populated so this is basically serving you serving as a guide to how you can create functions so you see we have function and end words that are colored in blue and these are actually the keywords that are used to tell MATLAB that this uh, M file is in fact a function then after the function we have the list of output variables that are placed inside the square brackets then we have the equal sign which as I said before is different than the equal sign that we use usually in math this is in fact an assignment sign then we have the name of the function here by default uh, it's putting uh, untitled with a number and then we have the list of uh, input arguments the second line uh, and the third line are started with percent sign which basically means that these are comments and won't affect the execution of the fine the function and then finally we have the statement that we have so let's just go for an example and see how this thing works so let me just define the output variable to be area and as you can see I didn't put this inside the square brackets and the reason for that is when you have only one output you don't have to put it inside the square bracket if you have more than one you need to do that as for the name of the function let's just name it calc area and for the input since we want to calculate the area of a circle we only have one variable the radius so let's just put some comments too 
So this is a function to calculate the area of a circle. And we can also add some additional comments too. For example, we can just say input and then specify that the input we have uh, RAD, which is the radius, and we have output, which is which is the area and its area of the circle. This one is the radius of the circle. So you will see in a minute how this comment is useful. Basically it's similar to uh, what we had for scripts. So now to calculate the area we just type the equation for calculating the area it's p pi multiplied by radius squared so now we need to save this and as you can see like before it gives you a suggested name but unlike the script with the suggested name was a generic name untitled with a number at the end here the name that is suggested is calc area in fact this is the exact same name that we gave to our function and that is necessary uh, in order for MATLAB to be able to find this file and execute the function so let's just save it let's just clear the workspace and now let's first use help function to see what when we execute this what we see so as you can see by typing the help function all the comments that appeared after the uh, function uh, line will be shown so now let's use the function to calculate the area of a circle so the way to do it is that we can define a sample variable, put the function name, calc area, and when we type that, you see that uh, it has some suggestion for us how this function can be used. And this is basically based on the first line of the function. So let's just put a number and then press enter. And as you can see, the area of a circle with the radius of 32 is going to be 3.2 multiplied by 10 to the power 3. And it's shown in the uh, scientific format. So it is not necessary to only use the command window to call the function that we define. In fact, we can call the function that we define in any other script or function. So, based on that, let's just modify the uh, first script that we had that requested the user to provide the radius. So, let me just comment out this line and instead here put calc area and provide the radius as the input. One thing that you should have in mind is that, uh, let's just go to the calc area function. You see that here we have area and we have rad. But when we wanted to call this function, we just provided the radius as input. So this is because all the variables that are defined within a function are only seen, can be seen inside that function so it's as if any function has its own workspace so you don't have to uh, provide the variables with exactly the same name so in fact if i change this uh, rad to r 
for example, and change this uh, area to A, the function works exactly the same way. Of course, it's always beneficial to provide meaningful name for the variables inside the function, especially when you have functions that are more and more complex. This can be very useful. So let's just uh, call this uh, function from our script. And just by adding this line of code, we can do that. So let's just save it and let's just run this is script one. Okay, first it shows the node, then as for the radius, let's just go for 45. And when we press enter, it actually calculates the area using this function call and provides the result at the output. So now let's see what happens if we have a function with multiple inputs and also with some internal variables. Let's just see if we still have access to the internal variables through the workspace. So for doing this, uh, let's just define a function that calculates the area of a cylinder. So this is a bit more complex, but not that much. It's good to uh, prove the uh, as a proof of concept. So just like you created a new script, you can use this uh, plus sign to create a new function too. And but this way, it's not pre-populated, so you have to provide the keyword yourself. And after doing this, you can just uh, can list the name of the output variable that you have. Uh, let's just give the function a meaningful name, so cylinder area, and as for the input, for the area of a cylinder, not only we have to have the, the radius, but also we need to know the height of the uh, cylinder too. So let's just provide some comments function for computing area of a cylinder. We can just put more comments, inputs. So rad is the radius of the cylinder. Height, the height of the cylinder, and uh, as for the output, we have still area, uh, which is the area of the So for a cylinder, we have two circles and we have uh, a side. So as for the area of the two circles, let's just define a variable. We call it circle area. And to calculate that, we can uh, use the function that, that we defined previously. So we have calc area and we provide the radius as the input. And this uh, basically computes the area of the uh, circle. Now we can define another variable. We call it uh, side area, basically the area of the side of the uh, cylinder. And this is two pi uh, radius and height multiplied. So this is the side area of the cylinder. And finally, we can put all of these together to calculate the 
the area of the cylinder so cylinder area it's two times circle area plus side area we have two circles and we have one side let's just save this again the MATLAB uh, has a suggested name which is exactly the same as the function name that we defined so let's just save it with this name let's just DLC the command window clear all the workspace and let's just run this function so let's just define a variable and then call the function cylinder area so we need to provide a radius let's just put 12 and for the height let's just put 13 and let's just run the function so since I put the semicolon it basically suppressed the output it didn't show the value for area but the value is stored in the workspace it's 1.8 multiplied by 10 to the power 3 uh, but one thing that you might notice is that we have two internal variables within our function too so we had the circle area and we had the side area and they are not present in the workspace so uh, for example if I want to show circle area in the command line command window I press enter I get an error undefined function or variable circle area and as I said before the variables that you use within a function are only visible inside that function again the function has a workspace of its own and after you execute that function these variables are created inside the function and whatever calculation that you have will be performed so if you have another variable outside with the same name so let's just say I have this circle area outside the function and let's just give it a random value 234 so I have this 234 here if I run the area function again let's just go with different uh, numbers for the height and the radius it gives me a completely different area than before but even though the circle area uh, is actually used within this function the value that we defined for the circle area outside is not changed so that can be very useful especially when you are working with more complex uh, functions and a script so just keep that in mind and again as I always say to my student the computer doesn't know what you want to do you should know what you want to do and that's one of the examples so you cannot expect uh, a function to have access to all the variables in the workspace it only has access to the variables that you put as input the same is true for the workspace all the internal variables that are defined within a function are not available in the workspace only the variable that that specific function provided output will be available in the workspace so in this video I covered uh, several topics I, I showed you how you can create simple script to perform uh, some statement also I went over a couple of examples on how you can use basic plots and how you can determine the symbol and the type of line that you want to use to uh, make those plots and also I introduced how you can define functions uh, how you can provide input how you can get the output from those function and how the workspace for each individual function is different than the general workspace that you have access to so in the next video I try to 
cover more topics, more advanced topics in MATLAB programming, especially if else statements that give you the option to add more complexity to your script and the functions that you define.